Okay, so Bonjour. Bonjour, Stéphane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you like it uh, in France? Do, are you happy being uh, here? Yes. yes. Fantastic, really. Um, I've only been once before with Games Workshop for one of their games days. Far better. Far better treatment. Really? Mm. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Thank you, Arwen. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's give a few insight from uh, your, your work to the people who are watching this video. Yep. Um, well, the first uh, drawing you did was Zeus. Uh, what, can you tell, uh, what can you tell us about it? Well, about him. Zeus, or, I mean, yeah. Zeus was, was um, obviously, it was the first concept. I produced for you, like you know, and, I remember, yeah. and so it kind of set precedence for the not only for the visuals but for my personal ideas for it. I mean, straight away the the, the glow of the eyes hmm. is one thing that set you know that that kind of set the the magical aspect uh, as much as all the rest that followed your brief the the, the degradation that the ruined clothing yet the immortal frame so. But um, um, after that, there wasn't quite, I mean, the only thing that was, that was present on this uh, with my continuous need to put little story twists into the artworks was, uh, was his spear, which was, most, most people do kind of like an over-exaggerated kind of lightning bolt, but when you look at the, the spearhead, it's, it's, a, it's a much more kind of, you, you kind of think of, this is something I didn't tell you before, but you kind of think of the, uh, the, 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 the Indian weapons, I can't remember what they're called now, where you stick the, stick the blade and they open up. Deadly weapons, okay. so they've got a finer point but with a lot of bloodletting. So it's kind of like, it is a lightning bolt design, but it's also designed for brutal injuries, you know, so, you know, we won't go too far. It's also sophisticated, uh, like uh, uh, his armor and his weapon are all sophisticated, and although his uh, claws are torn, uh, yeah. you can see that uh, it's not any weapon. It's, no, it's no, he's, he's, he's obviously uh, had the finest craftsman built his weaponry and his <laughs> armor and stuff, and uh, probably hugely disappointed that he's <laughs> he's got his his garments torn. You know, <laughs> but. But it was a lovely concept, you know. It's the first one. It's an exciting concept to actually do, um, um, and obviously I had to impress you to get the rest of the work. So. Um, you did. <laughs> <laughs> you did. I confirm. <laughs> yes, and it set the tone for the yeah, rest of the absolutely. gods. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, for instance, uh, Ares. Uh, well, there's something I learned about all those uh, pieces of art that you never told me. No. Uh, and well except for yesterday when I got uh, <laughs> I heard everything so yeah. can you tell us about the chain that he is having and what he has on his right arm now quite often you know we need Benoit here to, to explain the mythological yeah. facts yes. about yes, it yes, but, yes. Uh, you don't have to go into all details no no but he was he was chained up for some lewd behavior I think <laughs> they might say um, but he was chained up at one point and so it's it's a sign that uh, he was captive at some point, but it also proves to be uh, your typical kind of like powerful look, but also a, an extra element of, of armor. Uh, it, it's those added details to concepts that uh, you know that make these things work. Again, it was it was the early stages before I started really getting into the storytelling aspect of things, but and that was a precursor to the story. So get closer. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Athena, uh, well, there are two things you could talk about, mm. I think. Uh, there's the owl and there's the shield. Yes, yeah, yeah. Now, the, this one I kind of hoped and I had a feeling and I hoped that I would uh, maybe get a cover from, from <laughs> you at some point. It, but it, it, well, it made you guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was, uh, there's, there's so much story, storytelling to be, to be had uh, between having um, a figure and what are they called when you've got a, a familiar? Yes. A, a familiar. And, um, and the, the idea behind this is that the owl is like, how do we call it? A GoPro owl? Yes, a <laughs> GoPro owl. <laughs> and she it's, can uh, see through yeah, her. Yeah, oh, exactly. Straight. So it's a, like a level of telepathy. So she can yes. see through the owl's eyes and she'll send the owl off on a scout mission. And um, 
and, and that occurs in in the covers in both both covers you oh, can see yes, it occurring in both covers yes. and it ad aids to the story so she's sending out to scout out yes it we kind can of, talk about the, the cover yeah, yeah okay we'll leave that for the time being well no yeah. no yes we can we can yeah uh, in the cover we we can see that the owl uh, the owl is uh, the owl is coming <laughs> coming back, right? Yeah, the owl is returning. In the, in the teasing in the uh, cover. Yeah, that's the only action really. The subtle little stories, storytelling in with uh, um, who? Who's the guy? With the, the I never remember the names. The guy with the bow is Odysseus. Odysseus, that's and right. And then you have Achilles. Yeah, Odysseus and Achilles, and Odysseus is the thoughtful one. So yeah. he's he stood there and he's noticed that there's one guy. Uh, that's not behaving as he should do, being as there's a huge lightning bolt taking place on the mountains. And returning from the mountains is the owl. Now Athena's obviously sent off the owl to go and investigate what this, uh, this noise is all about, which is, and the noise itself, the lightning and, and, and such, the commotion is the battle that's taking place on the box cover. So, so on the box the, cover. And on you the box can cover see, again. So what's on the box cover happened before? Is, uh, it's, what's it's kind of like, I, I suppose it's, it's split seconds before, but, it, but it's like that's again, the, uh, you know, you, when you mention teaser, you've got to tease into another story, not Absolutely. just into the game itself. Yeah. That's my artistic yeah, that's, slant on things. That's very well thought. Um, and so the tease aspect means that um, in, in, the, in, the, in the main box cover, the owl occurs again. Immediate, you know, relationship, immediate uh, continuity. And the owl is, is moving away from the battle scene of Zeus and Hades. And uh, is flying back to then join Athena, which is the original teaser image. And so it's, it's all these little, you know, all these little hidden messages. Yes, hidden but that adds depth. And, and uh, when you look at the covers, then you start realizing a lot of uh, little elements. Yes, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, exactly. And storytelling also. I can't help but <laughs> kind of like, it's, it's the idea of you see something on the shelf, it looks good, you walk up to it, you pick it up, and then you've got to find something in that image to keep you looking. Hmm. And so the, if, the, if there's a good storytelling aspect, uh, it'll, it'll keep, keep the box in your hand and, and you know, touches a sense which is kind of undermined. So if you've got the box in your hand, you want to end up op opening it. So the longer you've got in the hand, the better chance you have, in my theory. So, and it's the same with anything that I do is, is, you know, there's always got to be that little bit more for the person that wants to look for it. So. That's nice. Mm. What about Hades? Um, what about his weapon towards... Uh, the yeah, the, uh, he was, it's, oh, I almost treated him because he, he was, even though he's still an immortal and, you know, not much you can do about that, <laughs> but... Uh, um, if he's an immortal fighting another immortal, he would still be considered one of the elders. Yeah. So he's got, he's got a slightly taller, sinewy, not quite as powerful look about him. And therefore, he's got these extra elements of power where he has direct support. You know, you've got... Uh, and, he, and, and I saw it as kind of like the, 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 his weapon fork or whatever you want to call it was being jabbed into the ground to loosen it up, almost like you would hold the ground to then... You know, either sow, sow your seeds into the ground or remove something from it. In this case, he's fracturing the ground mm. to remove the undead. And mm. like I said to you before, <laughs> flames, flames and zombies. <laughs> <laughs> flames and zombies. Who doesn't like that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now let's tease a little bit. Uh, maybe we won't show... Uh, <laughs> the art immediately, yeah. but this is for like stretch goals. Mm -hmm. can, what can you tell us about Apollo? Apollo, Ooh. right. Um, basically, he's, uh, yeah, yeah what is it? It's a good looking a, chap. Yes. Uh, I have to, for the record. A handsome a, man. Yeah, for the record as well, I didn't tell you. Um, I've got a friend in Nottingham, a very good friend called Marcus Sewell, mentioned his name, has no relation to the games industry whatsoever. Okay. But I always remember him for having this slightly lavish blonde <laughs> hair. And when I started drawing, I was like, oh, that looks like Marcus. It's like Marcus. <laughs> and anyway, okay, so he's got these bronzed kind of like, you know, good looking chap. Not that necessarily Marcus is or anything. But, uh, but he's got this, uh, the bow and arrow. He's got a GoPro arrow this time. <laughs> a GoPro arrow. <laughs> yeah. So he can literally 
like you see sometimes on games where you fire a missile and you can follow the missile. Yeah. He's got, this is you what fire he does the arrow and he, can, and he can slightly steer it if it's off target, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and it just allows him, you know, that greater accuracy. He's also got two bows, uh, two arrows, so there's two X arrows and he can quick fire as well. Okay. So he's like, a, he's like a fighter jet, you know what I mean? Quick fire. Another one that no one has seen yet. Uh, right. But we can talk about it. Uh, mm. That's Hermes. Yeah. Uh, what about his colors? Uh, his, uh, yeah, we blue were, and uh, yeah. The, we, he sees the the the, the messenger into between the gods and earth as such, and um, and so symbolism again. It's there's a, a level of symbolism, storytelling, symbolism in kind of like singular images as well. So the colors of him, which are blue. Uh, that, uh, and the fluidity of the cloak is, is, is supposed to kind of resemble the, the water, life-giving source, water on the earth. So he's got this earthly connection. Um, and there's also the, the wings on his helmet yes. fold up to, 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 to give him essence of speed. But when he's in battle, they fall, fall down. And it fall. looks like a Greek helmet Greek then. Helmet, yeah, right. That's yeah. very, yeah. So there's all these it, little hidden, hidden touches. Also, the one thing on that that I didn't say before is that the armor is built fish-like, oh. like scales, to give him that extra level of water kind of, oh, you know, so fluidity. fluidity and, and speed. And speed, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. Cerberus. Cerberus, beast, three-headed dog of Hades. He's like Hades, he's like Hades' little pet, but not quite so little. <laughs> he's like, I mean, you can imagine kind of like, got three bowls and or one big bowl and all this commotion you know anyway you know it's story time again but on this one it's like um he's got a harness right? huge harness to be controlled to a degree yeah. um to a degree, yeah. to a degree the obvious thing the flaming spitting kind of like staffordshire bull terrier nasty piece of work uh and then i suppose the the only vulnerable area of this is the tail at the back and so at the back you put you know, you see those, those uh, uh, the chains or the harnesses for uh, the chains for the, the, uh, the leads on yeah. the dogs. And yes. on, on some pit bulls, they don't, not only have chains, but they have spikes. Okay. They dig in to restrain them to give a bit more. And so this, the, that I use that element for the, the tail. So it's kind of like symbolizes the restraint of the dog, should it need be. But also, if it's the weaker end of the dog, you need something which is slightly kind of, you know, a bit of a defense on the back end, so. Oh, Hydra. This bit, something very interesting. I have to say that the model is just... <laughs> spot on, right? Spot on, yeah. <laughs> right to the mark. And, and the paint job I saw was, was exactly as I, it's, it's a concept, because you've got the color scheme of, of, um, uh, of the model and the, and the concept is that of a kind of like a shark. So you've got, you know, the greens and the blues from the top, it's a, an, an added level of cam camouflage. If you see it from above, it's that a little bit more camouflage. You can see it from underneath. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sea creature. Yeah. So the underside, the white belly of it, like a shark, just that little and bit you know, more camouflage. Because you know? the way you designed it, I know that we changed some of her uh, abilities and the way we imagined her. So uh, him mm. or her. I mean, in France, in French. Uh, Hydra is a feminine word, so that's why I sometimes I say. Well, let's go with her. I can't <laughs> like that one. <laughs> uh, when we saw the art and that she was so uh, sea-like, mm. we uh, added her as a um, sea creature. So yes. when she's in the water, she will go faster. Yes. And yeah. on Earth, she will walk slowly. Slowly, mm. you know. And uh, this is, uh, you know, when we see the art, sometimes. Uh, the game statistics are adapted accordingly. Yes, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes, keep, keep, uh, yeah, there's something with Hydra yeah. that I would like you to, to talk about this. The little uh, snake like in the end uh, near the, the tail. Yeah. What are those? Well, apart from the fact that, you know, I love drawing dragons. <laughs> again, they're a beast uh, that you can put all your creative mind to. So, again, like you're saying, on land it's got to have a big yeah. front and end to very drag. Very realistic. The rest. Uh, Reptile kind of uh, it's animal. It's kind yeah. of like on the, 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 the kind of stature that you would get from a Komodo dragon or something yeah, like that. Yeah, big, yeah. big beast. And then the back end disappears into, again, another kind of potentially 
vulnerable area of the beast to, in, in, in juxtaposed in, uh, to, the, to the, the powerful front end. So on the back, you need a protective area. Quite often in, these, uh, in, in underwater creatures as well is that they'll have something which uh, is disguised as, and in this case, it's a sea snake, which are highly poisonous. So okay. you get the sea, like the sea snake, snake elements on the back. Who are very venomous. Very mm. venomous, and it keeps, you know, it keeps prey away from its back end. From the, uh, the yeah, I have the to do weaker, it. the weaker, the weaker <laughs> part. Yeah, yeah, the slightly weaker part of it. Oh, Nimian line. Oh, there's an mm. incredible story. We were wondering, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we were wondering why the dreadlocks. Yeah, um, the the lion's mane, the lion's fur, the lion's uh, pelt, if you want to call it that, is actually its armor as well. I think it was only ever killed by its own claws, something like this. And so the armor itself uh, is is enforced by the fact that it's it's dreadlocks in this case. Um, now the story goes that I was drunk on a bike. I hope my mum doesn't see this one. I don't think she knows about this one. <laughs> but I was drunk on a bike coming home early hours in the morning and I was riding down a particularly steep hill and I came off with a leather jacket. My leather jacket was ruined and I spent a lot of the, you know, the, the, the skid on my head as well. But I had dreadlocks <laughs> right down to my backside, really? yeah, right down to here. And they were the only thing that saved my head. And there was, there was I think I might have snapped one little dreadlock, but and all I had was a little bit of grit in my hair. But, but it's, Almost nothing. So... The dreadlocks. Who needs these modern day, you know, Tour de France helmets when you can just grow some <laughs> dreadlocks? Maybe not. Well, you know a bit hot anyway. <laughs> they're a bit hot, but that's the idea behind the armor of the yeah. Nemean lion. Uh, the, the Minotaur. Uh, Minotaur is. Uh, Minotaur. It was based on. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the Wrath of the Titans had the latest film had the Minotaur in it. I really so. good concept there, oversized horns, but they were bluntened. And in the scenes in that is just running havoc around the maze. And so if, if the creature back in the proper uh, mythological stories is, uh, uh, was it, and captured in a, in, a, in a maze, then it was continuously being kind of like, uh, it was fed children. Sorry, kids. It was fed children, and, um, which is, for one, which is why the tool is kind of like a, a farm tool for scraping up the remains from the sides of the walls and stuff like this. And the horns are blunted because it's continuously running into the wall of the maze. So there is, there's no need for it to be kind of like scooping in battle, it's just bludgeoning. And then for you've got the, the maze kind of uh, branding on, on the chest as well. So it's all got these maze links to it and stuff. And there is this kind of like, you, what I quite like about it, if I may say so myself. It's beautiful. Yeah, is the it's this almost hoof-like feet and stuff. Yeah. So you have got this. I mean, the story behind it, if anyone cares to read, is, is quite bizarre. Uh, and there's a little bit more to it, but I couldn't include that on the, on the concept. Read it yourself, kids. Uh, Medusa. Medusa. Um, this is a, a, a... I mean, the Medusa is just a, such a classic image anyway. There's not much you can really do to, to add to its, its, you know, its impact, really. Um, or her impact, but obviously you wa I wanted to keep that kind of slightly sexy look about uh, the live kind of snake-like look about Medusa, uh, and I wanted her, uh, her chest to be exposed to some degree. But I knew that your audience was American, so I had to knock yeah. back certain well, elements. The European audience would have no problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't see why. What's the problem? <laughs> But That's indeed, yeah, yeah, you're exactly. right, you're right. So I subtly kind of like um, uh, uh, managed to... To how show say, to, breast to, to, to without... Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Was I, I, I could have said that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but, and, and then when you look close, there are actually scales over the yes, top. So, and it's like the reptilian look. Yes. Uh, you wouldn't find that they've got the same no, mammalian of kind of additions no, that you would no. have. Blah, blah, blah. But also on it, there's, there's also the extended neck to give yes. that more snake-like look. Yeah. And that, I can't remember what the tribe is, but you get those African tribes where they extend the necks with, with, uh, uh, with, with rings, break the necks in effect. And she's got these around the neck to make, make them look almost tribal. Yeah. But it's, as a protective armor layer, if she has her head cut off, 
job right. done. So it's a she protection. She had her on head neck. cut off. <laughs> <and> yeah. <laughs> she might not have been wearing the jewellery that time, you know, caught unaware, but. Oh, Leonidas. Yeah, now my apologies, but I kind of got this one wrong, didn't I? I know. We <laughs> He's makes left handed mistakes. in the original art, and we yeah. had to. Yeah. I got the sh uh, effectively. I got to the flip shield. The image. <laughs> yeah, I got the sh either the shield in the wrong hand, depending on if you wanted to flip the image. Uh, yeah. But I got the scabbard and sword on it's the wrong okay. hip. Yeah, some people actually noticed in the, the forums. Well yes. done. Uh, prizes <laughs> for them. There it is. I don't know what, but yeah. <laughs> Even yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah. Uh, There's a, he's basically just your heavyweight, glorified, you know. I mean, splendid armor, basically. Yeah. Um, not more you can say about that guy. But Odysseus. Odysseus. He's. Um, I remember pointing out that. I mean, I was. I was looking at uh, the original uh, Greek armor, reference shots Greek armor, and and a lot of them had. Uh, a lot of the bowmen, the archers, ha actually had the, the 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 throwing axe of sorts on this leather harness at the side. So they had that, but there's also a relation. To, it might not be the axe that uh, occurs in the myth, in the myth, but or in the story. But uh, he shot this arrow through through the, through the axe, so he has to have the axe. Bob. Yeah, and it just great. seemed yeah. apparent that Absolutely. the That's archers had the axe and such. And what is this? No, no, no. Uh, again, he, in the story goes that uh, in the um, it was a competition at the yeah. end of the day. He proved his worth afterwards. So it's, it's kind of like the flamboyant. I know they did exist, but I just thought add the stripes to the, the alternating He's colors. He's the only one that has the stripes, yeah. right? And it gives that kind of like competition, that kind of splendor. You know, step out and you've got this almost like a crest of color sort of thing. And the, uh, there was also kind of an infinity. Oh, yes. The infinity yeah. uh, the emblems around his uh, skirt, skirt or, or whatever you call it. And that was to kind of signify uh, the the infinite distance he can shoot his arrow. So it's all. You know. Well, in the game, it's only two zones. Right. But that's, <laughs> okay. that's still big. That's still <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this one is Perseus. Yeah. Sorry. We can see uh, Medusa again, but yeah. well, only a part of her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Poor I suppose the the bag. Uh, that's the only. I mean, it was uh, it was with the amount of snakes and detail that I had to get on. What was it in essentially in the foreground? Poor lass. Just <laughs> um, she, the, I, the only thing is that the, he's got a, a, a big bag and it's got a strap on the bottom, so he doesn't have to look at what he's putting in. He takes yeah. her head. Puts when he it, takes her head, th the do bag. the snakes still move? The snakes. So he's got to just get it in the bag as quick uh, as possible. Pull the drawstring. Her eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Pull the drawstring and get the job done quick. So it, the bag's very loose and it's very accessible. Okay. And that's pretty much, you know. You'll thing. see that, guys, anyway, yeah. when uh, this is uh, hopefully uh, unlocked Little during the secrets, campaign. Eh? Yes. Little secret. Well, thank you very much. Pleasure. It was a pleasure. And, uh, Pleasure's <laughs> all mine. Yeah. Great to be here. Great to be working with you. There we go. Cheers. Cheers. Salute.